Hi everyone, here we are again on the second live show. I am excited to be with you and to share today also many solutions to different problems and questions Hi, that people have started to send us through the web page. You know, if you have a question that you would like to hear the answer here through the live show, and the only thing that you have to do is to send us uh, the questions through a, a web page. The web page is www.theconstructsim.com slash Ross hyphen QA. Yes, I know. Yeah, it's more or less similar difficulty like learning Ross. Yes, I know. But don't worry. This uh, link beneath this video. So you can find it. Actually, it's already there. Great. So today we have many questions, so I don't think that we are going to be able to solve all of them, but I will do my best. And now we are going to start with the most important, I would say, the most important question. That is one question that has been asked by three people. So that's why I decided to answer this question today. Even if there were others very, very interesting, uh, you know, also to solve it, uh, but uh, today I'm going to put the, most of the attention on that question because of the people that ask already. And the question has been uh, sent by Mike from Ger Germany, Andrew from the USA, uh, Roger from the France. What is the question? So you're asking, waiting for. So the, qu the main question that we are going to solve today is how to combine odometry and IMU data in order to localize the robot? So that's a very interesting question, you know, because when you have a robot that is moving, usually you, you will use the odometry to localize the robot uh, without using a map, I mean. Then you will use this odometry to uh, build some kind of a SLAM algorithm and use that to localize the robot on a map. But what happens? It happens that the odometry uh, has a drift, has an error that is accumulated over time. That's the reason why we need a slam on top of that. But sometimes uh, you need even more precision on that odometry, on that uh, previous localization of the robot. Or maybe you don't even want to use a slam. You just would like to have a fair enough localization using an odometry system. For, that, for those situations is when uh, the fusion of different sensors can help in order to produce a better estimate of the position of the robot. Now, today we are going to see how to do this, how to mix the information from the odometry and from the IMU in order to get a better robot localization. Okay, so let's go. Let me share with you the, uh, the screen. So you can see how I am developing. And here we are. Great. So as always, we are going to use the ROS development studio uh, in order to show the solution. And I have here uh, created a package, a project that is called Robot Localization. And I'm going to, to open. Uh, this package will be available for everybody that is uh, subscribed to our Robot Ignite Academy. So it will be available there for, for free for everyone. So great, uh, now uh, we are opening the, the package, the project. And uh, as you can see here on the Python notebook, we have uh, the default Python notebook about the turtle bot because it's the robot that we are going to use. But today, we are not going to use this information. We are going to use a special notebook that I have created. I'm going to open it here, include it into the project. And here it is, robot localization node. Great. It's about fusing sensor data. Great. And uh, then the other thing is that we need a simulation of the robot. Of the, we are going to work with the target robot, okay? Because it's easy to work and show the, the effects. Then later you can apply the same to your own robot. And here uh, we are not going to use any of those because we are going to use the simulation that is included here in the simulation workspace. And is this one that contains the Kyobuki and also some modifications that they have done. 
uh, in order to be able to do this project. So if you launch the Kabuki that is included here, it's around here, that one, it will not work, the example here, because it needs to be added some special stuff that they have added. OK, so I'm going to launch this simulation. To do that, I have to press this button. Then it will appear here. Great, in a few seconds. In the meantime, um, let's go about the subject. So what's happening? Uh, let me enlarge this so you can see better. It's This is the case where a robot is moving, starting at that position, it's moving, and then we are computing the odometry, the odometry based on the amount of movement that the robot has moved. But as you see, as you know, probably uh, computing the odometry has some error because of the interaction of the robot with the uh, real world, with the environment, is not perfect. So we cannot model all the effects in the calculation of the odometry. So then the robot starts to drift from the real position. Then what we would like to have is to use some extra information from other sensors so we can reduce this, this error in the odometry in some way. OK, so for that, what we are going to use is a ROS node that already exists, that it's called the robot localization. This node, it's a node created by ClearPath Robotics, and that it's included in this web page. You will find the, uh, the link in the video, beneath the video. And well, that's a, the, the package that we are going to use. Basically, this uh, package is an expert on mixing different, different sensors in order to produce uh, the pose of the robot, the, lo the localization of the robot. It, how it does, how does it work? Well, it works by using a common filter. Whoop, here. And it, it contains two different uh, Kalman filters implementation, an extended Kalman filter and the ascendant Kalman filter. You can use any of them. Uh, some of them have uh, very different very small differences between them. So un unless, I, I think that unless you are very, very expert or very specific application, uh, you really don't care. You can see the results here in the, uh, in this, uh, uh, of the difference between an, ex an extended common filter and an ascendant common filter. And as you can see, both of them, the green and the blue, are practically the same thing. Maybe in some specific applications that I don't really know now. OK, great. So we are going to use the robot localization node. And basically, what it consists is that we are going to launch this node with a proper configuration. So what we are going to see here is how to configure this node. And uh, OK, so for that, we are going to use, I'm decided that I'm going to use the extended common filter, OK? So then, in order to launch it, I had to, to do this launch here, this launch information here. And that is what I have already created in here in the Catkin workspace, and here in the source, catch call title of localization. And here, I have the launch file. Let me open. So, you can see it's, I'm launching the robot localization. I'm indicating, specifying that I want the extended common filter localization node. And then I'm saying, OK, please load this config file. This is the config file that contains the configuration that you need in order to make this work. OK, so now let's go to the configuration file here. Right. Let's go step by step. I have done here the description of every one of the parts that we can see here. OK, the first thing that you have to understand is that uh, you need to set the reference frames. So the, the robot localization node uses four different types of frames in order to set it up. 
The first one is the base link frame, frame that defines the center of the robot. So uh, the, the place where the robot has reference for all the elements that are containing itself. So th this is the typical base link frame, for example. What? Then the second frame is the autumn frame. This is the frame that is used to specify the odometry. And uh, uh, this usually is the autumn frame. We call the autumn frame. Then, in case that you are having a map system, a map slam system, a localization system based on, on, a, on a common filter, on a particle filter, or whatever, that localizes the robot in a global position, then you have to specify this map frame. In case that you don't have this system because you are only localizing the robot using the odometry, then you don't need to specify this frame. And then finally, you have to indicate which one is the world frame. So which one of all those frames are we going to use for localizing the robot, specifying the actual position of the robot? Don't, I'm not using the map frame. Then we'll set the world frame to the autumn frame. In case that we have a global system, then we'll use the map frame as the, as the world frame. OK, maybe it's a, it's a little bit confusing here, but it's not. Just uh, check how it looks. Then um, here, first, let me show you here on the configuration file. I have specified all those frames here. And I'm going to set this bigger. Maybe it will be easier for you to, to see. Yeah, here it is. OK, so uh, here for autumn frame, I'm going to specify the autumn frame of the robot. Yeah. Then as the base link frame, I'm going to specify the base link. Because we are not going to use, in this example, any mapping system. That one, so it's not being used. And then, by hands, the wall frame has to be set to the odometry frame. Here it is. Just in order for you to, to watch how it looks like, then that will be the autumn frame. Is the autumn frame is a frame that is set on the position where the robot has been started. This link is the base is the frame that travels with the robot because it's at the center of the robot. We can see those frames here in the Arby's. So let me just launch it, Arby's, and just in very fast. Arby's, Arby's, and Let's go. So it's launched. Then I have to press this button here to open a new. See the the output of the Arby's. Here it is. And I have created a special Arby's configuration also in order to to specify the to to show on the screen what I am interested for this demonstration. Here, on, here it is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So the robot, as you can see here, is is there. Here we have the robot, and then we have the base link and the autumn uh, frame. Both frames are on the same position at present because the robot hasn't moved yet. Okay. So far, so good. It's not like in this picture here, where the robot has already moved. So we have the base link here and the odometry there. OK, great. Then here, yes, is this the example. And then the next thing that we have to do is to add the sensors that we would like to fuse. So uh, the sensors are exactly that. Uh, what I mentioned before, that is about using the odometry and also the IMU. Uh, but you, can, you don't have to be only you can use uh, many other sensors. As far as the sensor is producing a, an odometry mess, a, a, a post message that can be accepted by the localization node. So you can use that. Also, you can, for example, you can mix uh, different sources of odometry. Imagine that you are calculating the odometry with the wheels. Um, in the encoders of the wheels, but also you are using uh, the 
photometry by using a camera and using uh, doing a visual odometry or maybe you can also create an odometry by using the laser for example so you can mix all that information together like it's shown in this picture here estimate the position finally if you have a superior uh, node that is doing a global localization like the amcl localization package a g mapping that does a slam or a gps that produces to you the global positioning of the robot mix this information and obtain a global position of the robot with a very good estimate integrating that data okay great so uh, uh, after that we have to which sensors we are going to use and for that in this case is the autometry and the IMU for each sensor we have to specify this level here if it's an odometry we have to indicate odom and then follow it by the a number in a series so the first one has to be a zero in case that we have another odometry sensor we should have a odom one and so on odom two odom three if we have several sensors producing odometry then next we have to specify which topic is the one that is producing this autumn zero data okay in this case it's called noisy autumn and i'm going to tell you why it's called like that okay but just let me show you now that i have a specified okay i'm going to fuse information from an odometry sensor that is being produced on that topic also fuse information from an imu that is zero also because it's the number zero in the sequence of IMU sensors. And that data is produced here on the IMU data topic. OK, so far so good. So this is first step. Here it's an example that they have included, for example, odometry from a, a zero from the topic autumn, odometry one from a visual odometry, and odometry two from a point cloud odometry. This isn't the case that, for example, we have three different odometry sensors. We have the IMU. Imagine that we have two IMU sensors mounted in different locations of the robot, so we can have different values. Then we have the front IMU and the back IMU as number zero and one. Okay, so far so good. Then, next thing, and we are about to finish, is that uh, we are going to configure which one of the values prov provided by those uh, topics or by those sensors we are going to use to fuse on the on the uh, Kalman filter so for sensor we have this matrix of possible values that we can fuse so the matrix um, reads as follow so the first three values X, Y, and Z robot. So if we want to fuse those coordinates, we'll have to say in the matrix of configuration. We have a configuration here for the odometry zero, and it has to be called like that, exactly like that. So odom zero, like in the name of the sensor, odom zero, and the score config. This is mandatory. Whoops. Mandatory. Okay, and then afterwards we specify this matrix. Then the first three values are the X, Y, and Z. I'm specifying that I don't want to fuse that information there. So I'm not going to fuse the X, Y, and Z in the common filter. Three ones are the roll, pitch, and Joe. Next one are the velocities the angular velocities and finally are the linear accelerations so we have to specify this here in this case is calculated always from the wheels from the encoders of the wheels so um, it means that from the encoders we are specifying the the 
position, but also the velocity and the um, z angular velocity. We are specifying this from the same kind of sensor. So it doesn't make sense if we put here true for the z because it's, uh, it's the same um, value that if we specify here the velocities, you know, and this means that we are going to specify the velocities only and we are going to set to false the positions. And this is uh, something that here in the documentation of the node, it's been ex exposed, it's been indicated as the best way of doing for an odometry that is produced from the same sensor of odometry. So in our matrix, we are only going to use for fusing the odometry the velocity in x, the velocity in y, and then the angular velocity in the, of course, in the angle z. Okay, so this is for the odometry. And then for the IMU, we are going to do something similar. So we are going to see, okay, what is the information that these sensors can provide in different ways that we can fuse into the uh, common filter. So in this case, we have selected the position, the jaw, the, uh, it means the angular of the, uh, in the jaw axis of the robot. Then we have also included the velocity, the angular velocity in the jaw, and also the acceleration in the x axis. So, but for each one of those values, the IMU has a different way of calculating those. That is why we are producing those as true and the rest as false. Because it doesn't matter if we put true in other variables that we are, that, that this uh, sensor is producing, if they, those variables are calculated from the same sensor. So it would be if redundant information. Okay, maybe it's a little bit complex that, uh, but doing a couple of examples, you can understand that. So don't worry. Great, then so we have those, uh, uh, those configurations. And then one important point is that the sensors that we specify here, they have to produce exist a transformation between the information produced by the IMU, uh, 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 sorry, between the sensor and the base link. So somebody has to produce a transform for that. In our case, this transform is produced by the robot state publisher. But bear that in mind, because it depends on your robot. If you are, don't have a robot state publisher that is producing this transformation, to the base link from your sensor, from your sensor, from your sensor to the base link, you have to provide that transformation. How do I know that this is being produced there? Because if I check here, the raw stop peak echo minus N1 the data, then I can't see here the frame The frame, uh, frame ID, it's base footprint. So the information of this sensor is producing the base footprint. And if we come here to the information of the base of the different frames, we can see that there is a base footprint to base link transform created by the robot state publisher. So we are good, but bear in mind that in your own uh, specific robot. Now things. Uh, a couple of more parameters. Uh, first of, first one, the frequent, frequency here of publishing. I have set that to 50. Is the frequency at which this localization is uh, published on the topic. Second, the 2D mode. I have set that to true. This is when uh, the robot is moving only in 2D, like it's in our example. 
So it simplifies things. Then publish TF. We don't want to publish any TF now because we are already publishing that. Then uh, the other two parameters that remains are this. The autumn differential and the IMU differential. This is for the case that we would like to use velocities instead of positions for each one of those sensors. And since we have already specified that here on the matrix, I have set both to false because it will be redundant also. Here we have the information. We have here more parameters about the uh, noise covariance and etc. but those are not really mandatory unless your specific case. So for those, look at the documentation. Also, we are preparing a specific course explaining all the parameters of these nodes because they are very, very powerful and important. Okay, so we have it everything. So the only thing that remains is that we use it. We launch it. Great. So what we are going to do is to fuse the odometry with the IMU. And for that, let me show you. Um, let me show you first the odometry data that we are obtaining now. So for that, I'm going to open a new terminal here. I'm going to launch here the RBS again because I closed it on the previous one. It's RBS. I'm going to open also another terminal. Um, previous to that, yeah, I'm going to show you here. Again, I have to open the configuration file. Here. Config here. OK, there we have. So if I publish the odometry, I have checked here. I have included here an odometry publication. If I do that, then we can see here, let me get closer. OK, so yeah, so this is, uh, this is showing nothing here of the odometry because it, it is um, listening to a noisy odometry. What happens is that the simulation here has a perfect odometry. And then that makes no sense to show you how does it work because the filtering is not quite nice in that case because the filtering is perfect. So in order to provide some noise to the odometry, I have created a special package here that is called um, is here in the Katkin. That it's called uh, no sorry it's on the simulation. Yes. Autumn noise. And I'm going to launch that one. So it will introduce some noise and theta um, variables of the odometry. We can see how the noise is created. So for that, Ross, uh, uh, no, not, not that one. So autumn noise. Of noise. It uh, have to source that one. The simulation. Simulation, yeah. Simulation devil setup. Run. Oh, noise. Okay, so um, this is already the odometry topic and then producing some odometry with some noise. And we can check here the, inf the information here in this, uh, in the RBS, I'm plotting the odometry. I think it's, the length is too much. Let me just set. And you can see as the odometry is kind of noisy all the time. OK, great. Now, now we are going to launch the, this 
program, the robot uh, localization node with this configuration. So, uh, and we'll listen to this, this robot localization is listening to this noisy odometry um, topic and this IMU data topic. And then it's going to fuse them and produce a new odometry value that you'll see is a lot more stable values. And for that, I need to open a new terminal because I'm, I ran out of them. And then I have to launch the package that is called, it's in the Catkin workspace, that is called uh, Tartelbot localization. So, ROS launch Tartelbot localization. And then start. EKF localization. Okay, so here it is it launched this localization node fusing both things. Now on the odometry on the RBs here we can check this new odometry. The odometry is called filter it. And as we can see, it's here and it's quite stable. Let me also change here the length. Great. So the red ones are the noisy odometries, and the blue ones are the ones uh, that are has been filtered by and fused with the IMU data. Okay. So now I'm going to detach this. Uh, okay. So I don't know if you are going to see that at the same time. See this? You cannot see that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Cannot, okay, more or less. So, okay, so what I need is to move the robot. So I need to launch another, wait, I'm going to move it here. Source, uh, first I have to source the simulation worker space. Source simulation and devil setup. And then I'm going to launch the keyboard teleop. Okay. And because, uh, so I'm going to do something so you can see both things at the same time. I'd like to, to show at the same time how the simulation is moving and how the RB uh, is been showing the, the changes in the odometry and how the odometry, noisy odometry is, is noisy and the filtered one is very stable. So let me just do a trick. And out. So let me. Just share again with you the entire window. And then I'm going to show here smaller. And then this one also smaller. OK, so, so far so good. So and I'm going to show here the simulation here. Great. I think that this is more or less. And then, so I'm going to move the robot in one direction on the top. And as you can see, the odometry in the blue, it's quite stable, even if the red one is oscillating. And this is showing how the odometry has been fused in order to produce the blue odometry that is stable and at the proper position. It's being fused between the IMU and the odometry data. 
that's it. Basically, that's it. And then, okay, so let me just include this again here and put it back to the full size. Okay, great. So I will uh, give you a link to all this uh, data and then it will be in the uh, in the clients area of the Robot Ignite Academy. So now let's change the subject, and then because we have taken too much time in order to do this example, uh, let's go quickly to the questions of other people that are also very quite interesting. So let's go for the first one from uh, Saman from India, that uh, he says that how do I go about creating a car model, a real car model like BMW, you know Mercedes. And deploying it in ROS. I would like to simulate this car in ROS. Okay, so um, I cannot explain you here how to create a model of the car in Gazebo because it's quite complex. But what I'm going to suggest to you is that you go to a web page that contains an already created car model and you can use that as an example and then modify by yourself in order to adapt to the car that you would like to. So let me show you the I just show you. I would like you to watch, and it's here. Here it is. Cat vehicle tested. Remember, all you that you will have this uh, all those links beneath the video. Sorry about that. So here you can see that there is a, a model of a car with uh, many sensors, different features that you can use it as a for yours it contains already the control the 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 plugins the URD of the I will suggest you that you take this and then modify then in order to to change the mesh that you have here this is the mesh of the actual the car that is provided in this code so what I recommend you is that you go and visit my warehouse. Here you can check for, I don't know, BMW. I presume that there will be, uh, there will appear here many different cars. So you can download here the mesh of the, any of those cars and then adapt the model to fit into that mesh. So how to use this mesh? into a gazebo or a gazebo robot it, it we have a video also that explains step by step how to download these how to modify mass etc etc do to, how to scale also included into the links of uh, beneath this video okay finally i will also point that recently uh, the osrf has released a very very nice demo of uh, as you can see here and that uh, you can download it and of course use it again as a template for your own car this is for gazebo 8. great so next question question comes from Taijus from usa and says what is the best library for implementing slam in ros what is a good resource to learn how to use this library in a particular fashion? Uh, well, and then my answer is it depends on what you mean by best, which one is the best one. For me, the best will be the easiest one, the one that I can just right now make it work. For that, then what I would recommend you, of course, is that you use the G-mapping algorithm because it's already implemented in ROS. You only have to learn how to launch it, how to configure for your specific robot. That's done. You don't have to code. You don't have to, to do any special uh, routines for adaptation. No, no. It's only a, configuration, a matter of configuration. Uh, then, of course, if you want to, to learn about that, so I will recommend you learn how to use the GMapping software. So we, we have a Robot Ignite Academy. We have a, a course you can check there and also in case that you would like to learn more about other 
uh, mapping algorithms, you can check this page that is called the Open Islam page, where many different algorithms have been posted. Those are not ROS enabled. Use those code for yourself and then maybe Rossify those programs. So here it is G mapping in the beginning, at the beginning, so it's when it still was not included into ROS. And so it was here is the code that you can download and of course slam algorithms too. Okay, so next question. Next question is from Miguel from the Netherlands. It says, uh, he says, uh, I have a system with ROS installed and Apache server with PHP. How can I execute ROS commands on the system through a client using PHP? Okay, my, my answer is that I don't know very much about PHP, but I, I presume that yeah, PHP can send in JSON format. So if that is true, then in order to execute ROS commands, the only thing that you need is to set the ROS bridge server. ROS bridge server, and then you communicate with the PHP uh, page, sending a JSON command to the ROS bridge server. And then the ROS bridge server will translate this into a ROS command that will be executed into the computer and provide the answer to you. Bridge uh, suite, you can find it here. Bridge suite is here and contains the servers that I, I have explained to you. Very simple, this. So you can check the documentation here at Wiki and make it work, I'm, I'm sure. Also, uh, if you want to work with web communication with robot and with ROS, then what I recommend you is that you use the robot. So you can check this that already contains many, many works done for uh, using ROS through a, a web page. But the problem for you would be that it uses uh, JavaScript. It's basically using HTML5 and JavaScript. And this is specified here. But I mean, it's a good excuse for you to, to learn those technologies, maybe. Find out and let me you know what you think. Next question. Next question is from Maria from Pakistan. And she says, hey, I have made a robot in VRep and controlling its navigation with ROS. I want to know the temperature measure of robot process. Temperature can be indirectly measured processing rate of ROS models, ROS nodes, sorry. Processing the more the temperature. I have checked RQT top process for uh, RQT top command for process monitoring, but how can I add editors like CPU or memory through ROS nodes and use it for measuring robot temperature? Okay, yes, yeah, so it's that's quite easy. I, I think it's just a matter of finding the correct libraries for your language. So you work in this in Python. And uh, then you have your node. Then what you have to do is to issue the top command from inside your Python code. And then get the answer inside your Python and parse the answer in order to get the information that you want. So um, in order to and through a Python interface, I use this uh, library here that is called subprocess, and then it uses this subprocess check output where you can specify a command, uh, like in this example, with uh, the parameters, etc., and then you will get the result. This is not etc. So you can use this in your code, get the result into a variable, and then use the typical parse string uh, parsing routines that we know in order to identify the CPU or memory. OK, more questions. Kahif Nori from India says, can you please tell which of your ROS courses I need to do to make an autonomous quadcopter using LiDAR and all other necessary hardware parts? 
just need to know any of the tips that you can tell. Okay, so uh, for hardware, uh, still in, in our, still any hardware related course, because basically we, we do about Rust programming for developers. In that sense, I would recommend you to use the Rust navigation in five days course. This is the one that uh, tells you how a basic navigation system works with a, a laser, or you can use a point cloud uh, laser base in case that you are not mounting a laser on top of the quadcopter, that you could, because you are mentioning there a uh, leader there. Then the other thing that I will make use the, the course that we have that is called Mastering ROS, the Summit Excel Robot. So there is a course that specifies how to master the programming with ROS, a, a robot that is called Summit Excel by the company Robotnik. And there we are using uh, GPS uh, localization. So you can use that also for locating the quadcopter. It's the same. Uh, imagine, I imagine that you are using, apart from a LiDAR, you are using an IMU also. So you can use that. And of course, we have the, the first uh, demonstration. Great. Then Bamsi from India also, he, uh, he says, how to build, simulate, and control a six degree of freedom articulated arm in ROS? Okay, so your question is very generic. So I cannot answer like that, this in just uh, some minutes. And then what I would suggest you is that you start looking at something that is called ROS. The ROS industrial is a, it's a kind of a ROS that is focused uh, arm control in, in the controllers of, um, of industrial robots that basically are armed robots. And so you can have a look there. And you will see that there is a lot already implemented. And you can start investigating through there. Then also, maybe you would like to know about uh, some packages that are called MoveIt. That MoveIt, move it, is the planification of robotic arms using ROS. So this is also included into the ROS industrial. So you are going to get that anywhere if you start using the ROS industrial. Okay, Steve Duncan from Turkey. I have URG laser scanner and I in a 3D image using this laser scanner. Yes, that's the problem, exactly the problem that we solved the last week on, on the demonstration here. Uh, but then, how does the laser detect the nearest obstacle distance when scanning the environment? I want to learn this. I mean, the laser will scan its environment and it will show the nearest ob object distance and done. Okay, so uh, very quickly. So let me show you with the example that we have already. So here, that okay then here and ross topic ross topic Take uh, the laser call a to okay. So here it is. The one laser, and as you can see. Scan. This is the message of a laser scan. There is this ranges section. This section is the measurement that the laser has one of those 
uh, angles. So start most angle, then the robot is generating a ray, and the distance measure is indicated here. When let's say it has not detected anything, so the laser ray will return sensor and it was lost. But in uh, as you can see in this front of the robot, laterals of the robot, those measurements here are all infinite. Only the ones that collide with the wall will write us uh, some value. Here, so you can see those values here in the middle. Okay, so you have to get the message of the laser, go to the ranges, and then compare the values of oh, each one of those values is indicating distances. So you can follow them, and then you will get the closest obstacle. The one that is the lowest value is the closest obstacle. Then if you repeat this for each one of the lasers of your three, we will get the closest to the 3D image. Okay, so hope it's clear. No questions. Uh, Mohammed from uh, Saudi Arabia, he says, do you provide certificates of your online courses to LinkedIn? Uh, yeah, uh, we are starting to do that from uh, next week. So for everybody that does a course, then he will receive a link to apply for a LinkedIn certificate. Then we will review what he has done, and then or not, depending. It, it depends on well or not. Then this certificate that we are issuing will be shown in your profile in LinkedIn. Question, uh, Jess from Belgium, he says, do you have any ideas about where to find Ross jobs for 100% poor? No, no, typically for remote work. Um, I did have to subscribe to robotics wall mailing worldwide for the whole world that is continuously um, posting jobs requests and research requests cooperation requests projects etc about people. and many of them are related about ROS and some of them are related about remote works so what I would suggest you is that first go there Robotics worldwide and keep an eye on all the postings. Second, then have a look at the companies in robotics that they do accept uh, remote work that are based on robotics. And I will give you an example. For example, OSRF is a company that, that has some remote workers. Also, I would say that Shadow Robot also has some uh, remote workers. And especially so if it will suggest you that you follow this guy in Twitter, is one of the workers of, of is the chief technical architect of Shadow Robot. He is a very nice guy also, and is always he's working uh, remotely for Shadow Robot, and he's always posting. Well, apart from some things this guy so maybe he, that's funny but he's posting all the time about uh, how to do remote work you see remote work and and he's focused on draws of course so if you follow him you will get some insights about this how to do it etc etc then uh, yes this is still asking me a second question he says do you have any for them with ROS. Okay, so for that, basically, you will have to use GTest and ROS test libraries. Specific page here uh, on ROS that is called unit testing. And then here it explains how to do that. It will tell you three different types of tests, levels, let's see. One is the level of unit test of the classes, one is a, a unit test at the level so the nodes must work properly. And then another one is a 
model of the application to make the robot it's able to do. So uh, have a look at this link and you will get all the information. Basically, you will have to use just and test also for, for the generic test. So basically, is this the way of doing with us? Okay. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, something more is that uh, I will include a presentation there that uh, explains how to use this, how to start using this. I will include this presentation in the, in the links. So more questions then. Lagan uh, Kapoor from India, he says uh, the same uh, old question as before last week and we couldn't finish this. So, sir, may you start one course for learning and making robots controllers like uh, Raspberry Pi or Arduino so that people can develop their own tartable robot or some other similar simple And this question is, is us. So we are really considering creating a course. We don't have one yet, but we are in the list of the next ones to do. Because many people is asking us, okay, so I know how to program, but if I want to create my own robot, can I do that? It's nowhere is explained how to interface with the motors, with the control boards. It said, so uh, what we are going to do is to create a course for that specifically. It's still thinking not to create it, but it will be available soon, before the end of the year, for sure. Then it is from Lagrano. Why we not develop a tool so we can use ROS in a GUI format? I mean, like an application on desktop, it is not and something that is uh, more graphical in order to program ROS. The, the thing is that let me show you Blockly here by early robotics. And you can find here the code. Basically, it works like uh, the typical Blockly have some uh, some blocks that you put uh, and one depend on the other, etc. And you can define the code of those blocks. So you can pile them and use it for generic functions also. Uh, so have a look. I will find the link beneath the video. And it's quite interesting if you want to, to bring ROS to people that not prepared to, to program in, in real ROS. So, uh, okay, we are about to finish. Uh, let's, let's answer a couple more and then the rest we'll have to wait until the next week because it's already seven. So, the Sen, 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 Sen Lee from Germany. Not all packages supported by Kin no. So he means there are no all packages supported by kinetics. So how can I use an Indigo package on my kinetic version? That's a good question because so it's, it's true. So in, in kinetics, some packages are missing yet. The, the, the ones in Indigo, well, download the source code of the package that you want to have in Indigo, download the source code. Then you try to compile in your kinetic, uh, kinetic library. Chances are that it will work. Maybe you will have to tune small changes. It, the changes from one version of ROS to another has changed something in the programming AP. And not directly. Usually, I have done it several times, and then usually just a small changes are required. Then, final question for from Ricardo Mota from Portugal. Load and install the robot ignite gazebo simulations and walls to run on my local 
question. Okay, so maybe you don't know what all these questions we are using here in course in the run for uh, for free and the link also here uh, for our repo. We have and Valdezivo. Those simulations are for Rods Indigo, Valdezivo go to the repo, download them, and compile them. You should download them and in a Catkin workspace. A Catkin workspace and then do the git clone inside the source directory of that Catkin workspace. Then you go to the dev, to the space, compile it, and then you just launch it. It has to work. Okay, just uh, let me go quickly chat and see if there is any question that I can answer or something. Getting out of time. Okay, so I have here. So then I will do one thing. There are too many questions. So I will take uh, questions or those questions, and then I will answer them. The the, the video okay so you will find the answer beneath okay so that's all for today thank you very much for attending it's been a pleasure please keep sending us your questions so we can answer that and you we can learn a lot together and uh, if you like these kind of videos please subscribe to our channel and press the bell so you every time that we post a new video we post new videos every day every day even in the weekends so you can get those yes so thank you very much keep pushing your ross learning and see you next week